Hi, and welcome to the How-To Guide Starting a Preferred Pumper Program, brought to you by Western States Alliance, a project of PPRC, courtesy of the USDA Technical Assistance Grant. We are going to go through an explanation of what is a preferred pumper program, the importance of having a program, and the benefits of implementing a program. So let's get started. So what is a preferred pumper program? Well, we will be using Oregon's preferred pumper program as an example. This program is explained as follows. The Preferred Pumper Program, PPP, is an alliance of pumper companies working with local sewer agencies to establish standards of cleaning and reporting procedures for grease interceptors. The developed criteria encourages effective maintenance, which extends the life of pretreatment equipment, helps prevent building sewer backups, and helps promote compliance with local sewer use ordinances. Why is a preferred pumper program needed, and why do we care? Well, fog, fats, oils, and grease can cause a lot of expensive problems from sanitary sewer overflows, SSOs, clogged pipes that increase maintenance and operational costs, to human and environmental health issues. One of the biggest issues known after Clean Water Services conducted their research into starting their fog program was that all drains were being impacted by fog. Most food service establishments, FSEs, if they have an interceptor at all, only has their three compartment sink hooked up. But what was found out through CWS's research was that this captures only one tenth of the fog being generated at an establishment. And depending on the type of FSE, once all drains are hooked up, you start to notice a major increase in fog being captured that wasn't on anyone's radar until it reached the pump station or got to the wastewater treatment plant, WWTP. This graph shows the amount of fog being captured from before and after all drains were hooked up into the interceptor. Notice the major increase in each area, especially the hospital. Now, just by viewing this, what comes to your mind? Well, first off, there is a lot more fog being captured after the retrofit. This also means that the price to clean out the interceptor will increase and the FSC would have had to install a larger interceptor. More frequent cleaning would be scheduled and reported through the pumper, and the decrease in line cleaning and pump and treatment plant cleanouts would be noticeable. This would decrease the cost of the municipality, increase the work of the pumper, and increase the actual cost of the FSE. And this shows the actual generation of fog being created and thus applies the actual cost to the generator. Another reason why PPP is important is because through its standards, it makes sure that regulations are put upon where and how an interceptor is located and installed. Notice the problem here? Talk about a hard place to get to. In this photo, the lid couldn't be removed due to the sink being so close to the top of the interceptor. The pumper could get the screw off to unlock the lid, but it couldn't be removed. How can the interceptor be serviced if the pumper doesn't have free open access to do their job? Most interceptors not in a PPP are gravely overused past capacity and are sometimes only serviced once a problem arises, such as an overflow or clog. This is a reactive, not proactive, program. A PPP sets standards to make sure things like this never occur. So what are our desired outcomes? We want to protect public health and the environment. We want a cost-effective, data-driven program. We want to provide a public service that interacts with restaurants, schools, care and correctional facilities, as well as the general public. We want to be effective and efficient for our stakeholders and, of course, comply with state and federal regulations. Let's look at this one step at a time. First, protecting public health and the environment. We want a program that reduces or eliminates fog related SSOs, contamination to stormwater and water quality complaints. We also want to be able to capture data on these topics. Second, we want a cost-effective, data-driven program. This means have some type of fog information management system, or FIMS. FIMS allow you to focus on problem areas. We call this a fog triage program. By being proactive instead of reactive, we see reduction in non-routine fog-related collection system cleaning and in the number of fog-related pump station services. Your FIMS will allow you to gather metrics on both of these topics. Third, provide a public service. We want a program to allow for interactions with restaurants, schools, care facilities, and the general public. This makes it efficient and effective for customers. Did I mention your FIMS is able to gather data on all of these as well? The number of facilities who have received fog information, 
number of focused training events provided for fog customers, all new facilities receive fog abatement plan reviews, all fixtures and drains in the food prep and food service areas except restrooms connect to an appropriately sized interceptor, and information on sizing and maintenance frequency are provided to owners so they understand their actual costs. Fourth, comply with state and federal regulations. By implementing a PPP, we hope to see no fog-related SSOs, no illicit discharges of fog to stormwater systems, no restrictions of the collection system due to solid viscous discharges, no infrastructure deterioration or damage due to fog, and your FIMS will allow you to track compliance or reporting for NPDES permits, which demonstrates continued and ongoing compliance. Let's go over some of the drivers for why we want to have a preferred pumper program. Some infrastructure drivers are blockages and overflows, maintenance costs, infrastructure damage, treatment plant operations, and treatment capacity. What are some programmatic drivers? Program costs, inspection, data management, and oversight, public interactions, public outreach, regulating FSEs, and providing a service cost-effective fog control, which is effective and attractive for new and existing FSEs. Some regulatory drivers are EPA prohibits SSOs, EPA prioritizes enforcement, Federal pretreatment program prohibits fog interference with public sanitary sewer systems, and your DEQ NPDES permit prohibits SSOs and requires proper management of sanitary collection systems. Since SSOs come up a lot, let's talk about the cost to this really quick. Clean Water Services noticed that before their PPP, they were getting about six SSOs per year, four of which were fog related. After implementation, this dropped down to two per year. If we then take a look at some of the fines EPA has charged municipalities in the past for SSOs, we notice that this can be a very expensive problem. Look at Atlanta, for example, a total payout of $30.7 million. Who here would like to have $30.7 million to add to their current budget? Tried and true, having a PPP will keep your municipality from having to pay fines like these. By implementing a PPP, you will notice reduced program costs, improved resource recovery, enhanced customer service by providing expert staff a greater opportunity to improve partnerships with stakeholders. In order to have a successful program, standards need to be set so all parties are aware of what needs to be done and how goals are met. Nationally, a wide range of fog abatement programs are in effect many in response to enforcement actions compelling the jurisdiction to stop fog-related SSOs. There are many ways to prevent fog from entering the public sanitary sewer system. For example, FSEs, surcharges and fees, GRD design standard and maintenance protocols, and mandatory inspection and pumping frequencies. The preferred pumper program follows approved best practices for interceptor service, submits schedules of interceptor maintenance to sewer agencies seven days in advance, submits fog pump out reports to sewer agencies within 10 days of pump out, and you can see these standards by going to www.preferredpumper.org. The program works with restaurants and kitchens to use a preferred pumper who will clean and maintain the trap interceptor, document the trap interceptor clean out, submit the paperwork to the municipality, and works with grease pumpers on region-wide set of pumping standards, participating pumpers commit to a set of BMPs, participating pumpers submit a list of all of the customers they service, municipalities will identify a single contact person for the pumpers. Inspectors are able to focus on pumpers' performance. Pumpers complete and submit the report with the municipality and FSC both get copies, and the municipality addresses issues through their single POC for better interaction and results. The municipal members of the Preferred Pumper Program agreed what was a Preferred Pumper issue and what was a municipal issue. Preferred Pumper Program issues are cleaning standards, inspection standards, and reporting standards. Everything else is a municipality issue. There are three simple steps to follow as a pumper. Sign up to the program to become a member. Follow the PPP standards. Fill out the report and provide copies to the municipality and FSE. As a municipality, they agree to the city inspector will not hold up drivers unless something is wrong. The municipality is responsible to set inspection schedules to driver schedules. 
A municipality is responsible for interaction with FSC to establish frequency for service or repairs to trap interceptors. This infographic shows the procedure of how fog is created and how a PPP helps eliminate fog going to the wastewater treatment plant. By stopping fog at the source, the generator, and by capturing the majority of fog, you will see a decrease in cost and maintenance from line cleaning and SSOs, with an increase in compliance and regular cleaning schedules that match the capacity of the interceptor for the generator. Some of the noticeable benefits to a PPP are a shorter time spent cleaning after increase in service frequency, easier accessibility to trap after fog program is in place, restaurants will know who is in the PPP, standard pump out reports, one set of standards, one contact person per area, and better customer satisfaction. Finally, no more sewer backups as it's now being regulated and enforced, and regulatory increases in service per trap as needed. Municipalities have minimized costs for dealing with fog. Pumpers get increased business, improved service, and a faster service time. Rates are being used more effectively, and FSC owners have efficiently working GRDs, which lower emergency call-out costs, have longer equipment life, better equipment reliability, lower or break even with all true fog abatement costs, and they are compliant. This is a sample cost-benefit analysis for a large service district with over 650,000 population, over 50 significant industrial facilities, and over 2,300 FSEs. This particular district contains 12 member cities. Smaller communities can use the same structure, but costs and benefits will be much lower. The first column shows their current costs before program implementation. The second column shows costs of the program. The third column shows their savings. This is over a five-year plan, and in the bottom right-hand corner, you will notice they saved over $2.4 million in budget highlighted in green. This bar graph puts the savings into a really easy to understand graphic. Notice how the WWTP operation costs dropped by over $2 million because fog was being captured at the source instead of dealt with at the end of the line. This is what utilities of the future look like. We want to have a data-driven program, not an effort-driven program. This means that you want to gear your program where you're gathering important metrics with the least amount of hands-on work as possible. We want an outcome-based model which manages risks, recovers costs, and provides ecological uplift. We want to be efficient, provide technical assistance instead of having to enforce. We want to be proactive, meeting the challenges and providing solutions before a problem arises instead of reacting to it after the fact. This is a better way to handle fog and it shows by providing better customer service with more communication between your stakeholders. We need to understand who our stakeholders are and how they interact with one another. This part takes time and patience as once you start this process, you will understand how complicated it can be to set a standard across all necessary jurisdictions and how important it is to take this time in order to get the control necessary to implement a PPP to the level needed to reduce fog costs and cleaning issues. Since our case study is based in Oregon, you will need to figure out who your stakeholders are depending on your location, as these currently listed will be subject to change. Fog impacts everyone, from member cities, government agencies, utilities, pumpers, ratepayers, operational costs, and the training needed to educate everyone. Implementing a FOG program and having a preferred pumper program will assist with all of these issues from each of your stakeholders. Once we have determined who the stakeholders are, we need to communicate with them based on the type of entity and authority from the top down to create a successful program and make sure overlapping areas have a congruent plan and standard. Start by contacting the regulatory bodies first so we can match up codes and make sure we can create a standard that meets everyone's needs. If possible, find out who currently issues licenses and propose a partnership process rather than making the business owners go to each agency. There can be a lot of overlap and contradictions within code and regulations, depending on the jurisdiction. A common interest can be a foundation for coordination between jurisdictions, reducing time and costs for all parties. The plumbing official has a very limited jurisdiction that begins when the permit is pulled and ends when the permit is signed off. The pre-treatment program, and in the case of food service establishments, the public health authority, have ongoing relationships with businesses. Institutional kitchens, 
such as nursing homes, hospitals, daycare centers, church soup kitchens, and schools may be inspected by a different agency or not inspected at all. In order for a program to work, we must be able to condition or prohibit discharges, control non-domestic discharges through permits, require periodic reports, inspect non-domestic facilities, and take enforcement for non-compliance. Next, let us reach out to those entities that are regulated so we can find out their needs and address them appropriately. Now, I know this isn't easy and from past experience, we wanna make sure you understand barriers we have experienced before to help you avoid these issues, such as regulatory complexity and lack of alignment, costs, capacity, and compliance, retrofitting existing problems, costs and incentives, education and outreach, plan review and support, effective sizing, and energy recovery. Within our case study, we noticed these three topics to pay attention to as a municipality dealing with the pumpers. Notifying the municipality of each week's pump out schedule, reporting each pump out in some form to these respective municipalities, we highly recommend a digital platform, and reinforcing the drivers that grease and solid measurements should be recorded at the time of pump out. A frequently unknown generator with little to no regulations are mobile food units, MFUs, otherwise known as food trucks, food carts, or mobile FSEs. Due to the lack of regulations, these generators can cause major fog issues and stormwater contamination. They don't have permits because they aren't recognized as official buildings, and this has become a major problem in certain areas because their dumping isn't regulated. While doing your due diligence, you will notice new things such as the knowledge of stakeholders concerning fog. Sewer districts will have new knowledge of fog impact and a better understanding to solve problems. FSEs will know their responsibilities and liabilities, equipment knowledge, and costs and saving practices. Property owners will better understand their role over vendors. Pumpers will provide better service and be able to better address problems their clients face. Thankfully, we have assistance to handle these issues. For example, supporting entities like ACWA here in Oregon, which can help us logically sequence our needs, clarify an overall approach, writing project plans, develop an outreach and education strategy, develop a local sewer use ordinance, establish mechanisms to control industrial users, conduct an industrial survey, and understand oversight and reporting requirements. The top four things that help create a successful PPP are connecting all fixtures and drains to your interceptor, size fog pretreatment system to the fog generator food beverage operation, Effective fog pretreatment systems include maintenance prior to unacceptable fog bypass and a digital database that every member is connected to. Now that we know who our stakeholders are, who the regulatory entities are, and who we need to manage, and we have a rough idea of the standards based on our communications with each of these entities, we need to know how to track all of this data in order to have some semblance of control over our program. There are different options to collect data, reports, and to compile metrics. We highly recommend using a digital platform because of all of the features provided, ease of access, and reduction in overall cost. For example, Swift Comply allows you to manage risks by increase compliance under FOG program, reduce SSOs, reduce costs by eliminating district annual data entry labor costs from 17 to 40,000 a year, manage one system and have control over data, save time by encouraging online enrollment and document submission, prioritize inspections of highest needs, improve relationships by working collaboratively with FSEs and pumpers for FOG program success. Online FOG platforms allow you to track FOG program elements as separate entities and add more as your program matures. You can track establishments, service frequencies and compliance status, store business, grease device, and contact details, and record activities, receive pump outs directly from establishments or service providers and track automatically to establishment profile, conduct inspections in the field and store on an establishment profile, simple custom forms, conduct in-field and email to site contact, auto-populate results and establishment profile, track outcomes, and schedule follow-up visits. Once you have your program defined and ready, we need to be able to implement the program. So how do you get training for your inspectors in order for them to train others down the line? 
Western States Alliance has a national web-based and in-person training module for inspectors. These trainings provide the necessary tools to communicate effectively and provide resources of previous case studies, other programs in use, and entities that can support you as you move along. On behalf of the USDA and WSA, thank you for your time. We hope this guide helps you with your FOG Preferred Pumper program. You are welcome to reach out to WSA or PPRC to schedule a training or receive training resources.